705-63 right now in downtown Turks. So we have a very special guest joining us on the phone, Colonel Lee Ellis. He's going to be the uh, first uh, speaker this school year at the American Studies Institute uh, Distinguished Lecture Series, which is uh, tonight at uh, Benson Auditorium, Harding University, at 730. And uh, uh, Colonel Ellis, thanks for joining us this morning. Thank you for your service. Hey, good morning, Bill and Grant. Good to be with you. Good morning. Yes, thank you so much. Everyone is so excited to have you in here, and uh, you're coming tonight at uh, Harding. And, uh, of course, you uh, have uh, served at uh, Vietnam, 53 combat missions over North Vietnam as an Air Force fighter pilot. And uh, I know you've offered, authored several books on leadership, and uh, I suppose that's what you'll be talking about uh, today. Is that right, uh, leadership? Yeah, that will be a central theme going through. It, you could say it's uh, the, the... I usually talk about leadership lessons from the Hanoi Hilton, but they're really just life lessons as well. Uh, so it really kind of blends together about uh, living a good life. You know, I'll be speaking to these young people primarily. They'll be people from the faculty and the community. But uh, I want to highlight uh, the role of courage in our society today and how we really uh, need a lot more of that. Character, courage, and competence are the three highlights. But underneath that, we talk about knowing yourself. Uh, that's important in any endeavor. Uh, guarding your character, staying positive, uh, having the courage to do what you need to do, those kind of things. So, yeah, it'll be focused a little bit toward leadership, but it's also, uh, I think it's an inspiring story of the great leadership we had there, but also it's about resilience. What, uh, Colonel, what I've read of the book and, and, and also watching some of your videos on your website, uh, uh, you know, telling your story uh, of what happened to you there in Vietnam, you spent almost 2,000 days uh, in captivity, and you talk about how, you know, how scary that is and everything. That's something I think most people, that, would defi- that event would define them, but rather I think you were defined, you let that change you and define what you are now. You know what I'm saying? Uh, and, yeah, and with these the leadership question lessons. had a significant impact on me. I was uh, kind of a happy-go-lucky young kid when I was captured. I just turned 24. I was a fighter pilot. I uh, didn't really want to do anything else in life. Didn't know I could do anything else. Uh, you know, I was always into athletics and uh, outdoor stuff and adventure. But that gave me the ability to focus a lot more. It helped me to mature. It helped me to realize that. Uh, uh, well, whatever was important, I need to focus on it more. So all of those things have uh, stood me well in my leadership in the Air Force and my career there and then since as a leadership consultant. So uh, I really feel like it did uh, bring me, it brought out the best in me in many ways, and I've tried to hang on to that. We are visiting with uh, Colonel Lee Ellis. He's going to be at Harding uh, tonight at 730 at Benson Auditorium. And uh, I think you have a unique perspective when we talk about your service in Vietnam and then uh, all the things that you've done since then uh, regarding what's going on currently with um, our world and especially uh, the fight against terrorism and uh, what we're facing in Iraq and in Syria. Um, I'd love to get your take, uh, especially where we are right now. And, uh, you know, we just talk to you about characteristics like uh, leadership and and courage and uh, I'd love to get your take on on what we're facing as a country those that uh, uh, the realization that there are people out there that that hate us and um, are against freedom and things we stand for Mm -hmm. yeah I think you know I think it's uh, we live in a bipolar world in in a way I think we always have in that things can be very bad and yet very good at the same time. Uh, we're living well. We're enjoying our freedoms. Uh, but at the same time, uh, there are threats out there, and things could get bad uh, around the world. And uh, Well, they already are bad. We've got Ebola going in Africa. We've got uh, ISIS going in the Middle East and terrorism, Hamas, and all these other organizations. We've got Russia uh, pushing out and trying to recapture their Soviet Union. So there are a lot of uh, very dangerous things going on in the world. Uh, It's probably always been that way. We've been an island nation, been able to live uh, pretty much protected here in our country. But uh, I think uh, being a military guy, I always like to prepare for the worst case. So I think we need to think in terms of 
what could happen and be prepared for that, not only uh, practically, but emotionally and mentally. And there, uh, therefore, I think, you know, the idea of resilience keeps coming back into my mind is that we are tough people. We can be tough and be resilient when we need to be. Uh, I think for those young people tonight, I'm going to encourage them that, uh, you know, you can get through difficult times, and especially if you stick together. So, uh, and, and live by your principles. Just live by your, just keep living by your principles one day at a time. That's what we did in the POW camp. I think that's true as a nation. I think that's true as a community. I think that's true as an individual. Being in the Air Force and being a fighter pilot, uh, I realize Vietnam and what's going on in the Middle East, a little different theater of war, but... Uh, you know, we're being told that that airstrikes alone is going to take is going to do the job. Do you think that's the case? And and talk a little bit about the relationship between the the ground forces and what you did in in in, in the military. Yeah, you know, air power has certainly improved its accuracy since, since the day cyclo. They have laser guided everything now, and uh, the capabilities are so much uh, better to hit pin, the pinpoint accuracy than we had. On the other hand, uh, if you're going to uh, Go in and root people out. You know, if, if if air power would have done it in Iraq and Afghanistan, we would have uh, wiped that out a long time ago. We got problem out, not the countries, but the problem. So uh, I don't think the air power air power is absolutely essential. But when it comes right down to it, it doesn't occupy territory. And for that, somebody's got to do that and go in and root out the the ones that are hiding out from the airstrikes. Root them out, capture them, kill them, whatever is needed there. And uh, somebody's got to do that, and I think we're trying to figure out who that's going to be. We don't want to do it. We're trying to find some other people that will do it, and obviously uh, they don't want to do it. In the past 40, 50 years, people have depended on us to go do that. Uh, we've been strung out now for 11 or 12 years, and we're really not in a good position uh, to do that. We could do it on a limited basis. If they would come out and fight in the open, which they probably wouldn't do, but uh, we could probably handle that. But it's going to be a stretch for it, Colonel. I don't, I'll... Think the, I don't think I don't think the American people are quite ready for that yet. They're they're moving towards being convinced that we could do that, but I'm not sure they're there yet. Well, hopefully, it won't take something devastating. Uh, before we move to that point. Mm -hmm. uh, Colonel Ellis, you had mentioned Ebola. Uh, it's kind of interesting that we're sending troops to Africa to battle that. And uh, do you see kind of... Um, uh, uh, do you, what, what do you think about that as far as using the, the military uh, in regards to the Ebola outbreak? Yeah, that was quite a surprise uh, to me. And, you know, it's interesting. President Obama was in Atlanta talking to CDC about Ebola within two three days after sending 3,000 troops to Africa to deal with Ebola. So I don't know what the threat is there. Uh, obviously, it is one if you can start to spread, you know, worldwide. So I do understand the need to combat it. And so uh, maybe that's a good thing. But it was quite a surprise to me to send the military there uh, to do that. And um, if I were a military person, that would have been a surprise to me. Okay, I'm going to go... Instead of fighting the bad guys, i got to go live over here where this plague is going through or this virus is going through that uh, it might be a, a more significant threat than going to war. So a little bit unusual. Uh, uh, maybe the best thing, I don't really know enough to say, but it, it, uh, I think most everybody supported it, but it, it was a surprise to me. Colonel Lee Ellis with us. He's going to be speaking tonight, uh, 730 Benson Auditorium on the Harding University campus. And uh, great visiting with you this morning. Have a safe trip. Uh, we've got uh, copies of your book, Leading with Honor. We're going to be giving those away coming up. And uh, we appreciate you taking the time to speak with us this morning. Well, thank you very much, Bill and Grant. You guys have a great day. And thank you for all the great work you're doing there in your community. Thank you. And thank you for your service. 714 on the Wake Up Call on News Talk 99.1. Good morning.